Hey everyone, it's Melanie of Art Studio 320. Last week I took our old buffet and transformed it into what you see behind me. The biggest thing I did was replace the doors. I took off the old doors, I bought new doors, took out the wood panel in the middle and replaced it with glass. I'm going to show you how to do that today. Stick around. I had every intention of keeping these doors. I was going to refinish them and put them back on, but that's not how it worked out. The two ends have doors and I took the doors off and I stripped them. I went through all of that and then realized they are in bad shape. And I just thought it would be better just to replace them. I got two doors at Menards. I needed to be able to take out the center panel in order to replace it with glass. This little notch tells me how far in this panel goes. To make sure if we're accurate, we're going to take a post-it note and push it in as far as it goes and then draw a line. And that will tell us how far we need to cut in to this panel in order to take the panel out just happened to have a piece of trim that measured perfectly. So we used that trim like a ruler and just traced it all the way around. Since I've never done this before, I asked Phil, my husband, to help me because he has done it before and he knows what he's doing. So he's gonna be helping me today with this portion of this project. There are a few different ways you can cut into this wood, but you need to be careful not to cut too far down. And you wanna make sure that it's a nice clean cut. And my oscillating tool was not doing that very well. I tried a couple of times, but it was just too rough. It wasn't going in without slipping around. So we decided that Phil was going to use his circular saw and he cut in a ways from the corner, which he can do because he's quite talented and he's been doing this his whole adult life. He was able to cut around the frame. And then I went back in with my oscillating tool and cut out all the corners and the parts that his saw missed. Now he was able to set his blade perfectly so it wasn't going to go too far in. I don't remember much about high school biology except for the fact that our teacher used to say a clean lab is a happy lab and that's that's what I took away from my biology class. Hence the shop vac. Now after Phil finished with the circular saw, I needed to go back to the corners, as you can see, and use my oscillating tool until I could work down through that wood and not go too far. And I also used my screwdriver and a chisel to make sure that there wasn't any wood that was still clinging on to these pieces in order to get the panel to come out. You can see me kind of prying the pieces up, but you have to be careful. You don't want to try and pry it out before it's ready to come out. This is not like demolition when you just break stuff out and rip it out. This is more precise. This takes a little bit of patience and time. And I wanted to show you the whole process so you can understand that it does take time and patience and you have to be careful not to tear into the wood because that glass is going to fit in where that panel is right now and you don't want it to be loose. Thank you. 
now that I have all of the pieces out, I should be able to get the panel out, but there are a few things in the way. I need to clean up those edges so all of the wood is out of the way so the panel will easily come out and that means the glass will easily set in there the way it should. Now that the panel is coming out, you can see the lip around the frame. You can see where the glass is going to sit. Now I need to measure top to bottom and side to side where the glass is going to sit. I measured the panel and I measured the space because I wanted to make sure I gave the exact measurements to the person that was cutting the glass for me. I bought the glass at a place called Classical Glass around where I live. And it comes in big sheets and all they do is stained glass windows and sell glass to people like me or somebody maybe that's refinishing their kitchen and they want glass in their cabinet doors. She was very nice. She cut it that day when I asked her and she wanted to wait until I got exact measurements and now I understand why. These are called glazing points and they are used to hold the glass into place. They're very flimsy and they, they bend and they're very hard to put into a harder wood. So I used my chisel to try and make a little hole <laughs> for me to put the pointy end in first. You put that in, you put it straight in, and then the two arms on either side hold the glass in place. And there you have it. Now that I've stained and top coated my doors, and put the glass in, I can now put the hardware on. You can put the hardware wherever you want, but you're gonna want to put it the same on both ends of your door. So I'm putting it two inches in on the bottom and the top, and that means I'm putting the bottom part of the hardware at the two inch mark and going up from there. Then I take my pencil and I mark the holes where they need to be. Now you want to make sure you get that hardware on the right side. You saw me turn that over because I realized it wasn't on the right side. What you can do is you can take your door over to the cabinet, wherever you're putting it, and then you put the hardware on and you can figure out how that hardware goes. This is a great little trick my husband taught me so you never drill a hole farther than you need to. I'm measuring the screw on the drill bit and then I put the tape on where that screw ends so that I'm not drilling any farther than that little part of the screw that screws into the wood. This is a very thin piece of wood and if I used a big drill bit and a bigger screw, I would have gone all the way through. So you have to kind of think about where that screw is going to go and put a piece of tape on there and you will never drill through again. It's a great trick and it's so helpful when you're working in small little pieces of wood. Take your time, measure twice, drill once. Another good tip when you're screwing in your hardware, when you put the screws in, don't screw them in tight. Screw them in enough, but keep some room so you can move that hardware around a little bit. Now, at first I think it's right, and I realize that it's not quite the way I want it to be. It's a little crooked, which is gonna make my door crooked. So I end up taking the screws out just a little bit and moving the hardware around a little bit so that I can make sure that it's straight. And sometimes when you put the driver in there, it will move, 
and you just have to hold it and just be patient. You'll get it right. You just have to take your time. Now that the hardware is on, I can put the door on, but that takes a little bit of work. Patience. You have to move that thing around. There is only one spot, really, that that door is going to work because it's such a small space between the door and the opening. And you want to make sure that it's the same on both sides. So you have to measure from the top and the bottom, make sure it's the same on both the top and the bottom and the sides and with the other door. Now, once you've done those things, you can make your holes for your hardware. And you've got your hardware on the edge there. You make your holes just like you did before, but you make it on the cabinet. And then you can take your door off and drill your holes. This too is a small piece of wood and I want to make sure that I don't drill right through it. There's one thing left for me to show you, and that is the hardware that goes on the front. I chose a little MCM knob, and I want it to go center. So I'm measuring the center from top to bottom and from side to side. But that's a personal choice. You can really put it wherever you want. Now when you're drilling like I am right here, you want to make sure that you keep your drill bit nice and straight. So I'm going slow in order to do that. I don't want to get it crooked and then my hardware would be crooked. I hope now you are equipped to replace the doors on your next project and replace the panel with glass. Thanks for being here. Good luck on your next project and I'll see you next time. You can do it.
thanks for watching my video. You can find more videos just like this on my YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe.